Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here. Welcome back to beginning interactive fiction with sugar with twine and sugar cube video tutorial series. That title all it's like a tongue twister to me. I'm always just stumbling over it. Okay, in this episode, we're going to be diving a little more deeper into macros. In the last episode, in the last episode, I showed you what a macro is, and now I'm going to show you why you would want to use that. So, of course, we're going to go back to our depth charge story. And I want to do a little cleanup here. You can see we have all these temporary variables and all this stuff. What we're going to do is, I don't think we're using our backpack here. We can delete this now. And um, we can delete our inventory too. We don't necessarily need to do that. So in the story, we're in this underwater base. And what's happening is this thing's about to fall apart. And we got to escape. And the way we and the way we do it is we break out of our cell and later we're going to reach a passageway that has that is flooded. And we'll do this right here. We'll say uh, you you step out of the door and you find a flooded passageway. Now what we want to happen is we want the player to swim out. So here we, I've created a new passageway swim to escape. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to link this to, say, two other passages that is going to be underwater. And basically, the player can navigate through these passages. And the problem is, is they have a limited amount of air. And if they run out of air, they're going to drown and the game is over. Okay, so this is a very simple passage structure. What we have here is you take a deep breath and duck your head underwater. And now we're gonna go swim and they go into the abandoned hallway. From the abandoned hallway, I give them a choice. They can either swim north and go to the northern hallway or they can swim east. And it's the door being open is just kind of a ruse. They don't know that could be an exit or in, in fact it isn't. What it is is just the jailer's office. It's empty, so they have to swim back. And then they reach the northern part of the hallway, and then they see the light above water, and then they duck their hair, then they have the option. Then they see the light above water, and then they can stick their head up, swim up, and get the air. There's a few ways now that we can do this to track the state. As I mentioned again, we can write code that occurs in each passageway here to check the status of the player, to check their oxygen level. But again, that's repeating ourselves. This is an excellent use for our macro. But before we do a macro, let's create our player object to describe the player. And this is just going to be a simple object. I'm going to create a player equals, and then I'm going to put an open brace and then a close brace. And then I'm going to give it a property called oxygen. The oxygen is going to be set to four. So basically, this is kind of cheap in a way. If the player goes into the office, essentially they die because they'll run out of oxygen. They'll reach this northern hallway and then run out of air. Now they could potentially run out of air by moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth again. So that is another place where they could possibly die. Okay, so we have this set up. Now let's write our macro. I'm going to go into depth charge and I'm going to open our story JavaScript. So here's our previous macro and I'm just going to delete. Actually, what I'm going to do is keep that and I'm going to change this to We'll call this swim underwater. I'm doing this all lowercase, and the reason I'm doing this all lowercase is if you go through the SugarCube documentation, they specify all the macros are specified like this. They're, there's no spacing between them, and I'm just keeping this to be standard with the documentation. 
you can do something like this if you wanted to, or you can do something like this. Either way, just be consistent in, in what you choose to do. So here's our handler. This is the function that will run when the macro is called. And remember, this just simply prints out hello world. I'm gonna keep this code here. I'm being a, a coder by trade. I don't like to delete things. I rather copy and paste it. That way it saves me, saves me some time. Okay, so here is our parameters, which I mentioned in the last episode. Place indicates the passage that this is occurring in. Macro name lets us know what the macro is. In this case, it's gonna be swim underwater. And then we're going to have parameters. Now we're gonna pass in a parameter. We're gonna pass in that player object we created here. So we're gonna pass this in to this macro and then we can do operations on this player. So I'm gonna go back to edit JavaScript here and then we're gonna write the body of our method. First, we need to get our player. The way we do this, and this is JavaScript by the way, we type var because we're declaring a new variable and I'm gonna type player like this. You'll notice that there isn't a dollar sign before this. I could put a dollar sign, but I come from a programming practice where I don't really use dollar signs much. That, when you're doing dollar signs here, this is very specific to Sugarcube, and you should do this with all your variables. Put dollar signs before that, that way the parser can know that it's a Sugarcube variable. In JavaScript, you don't have that restriction. So I'm gonna put var player equals, now I'm gonna assign the, the parameter, and I'm gonna type params. Now a param, uh, the params is simply an array of things that are passed into it. And if you're confused or don't know what an array is, I cover it in a, a few videos back, so I highly suggest you check out that video. So there's only one object we're passing into this, this macro. So I'm gonna put bracket zero. This indicates the first object of the array. And I'm gonna put a semicolon at the end of this. This is a good programming practice when working in JavaScript. If you don't add a semicolon, the browser will actually add a semicolon for you, and this could ultimately create problems down the road. And so it's just a best practice to always add your semicolons. Okay, now for the sake of understanding what's going on, we're going to print out the current oxygen of the player. And we're gonna create a new Wikifier, and I'm gonna provide some text here. So I'll just add like this, player oxygen supply. And this is debug information. This is where we can determine when something's wrong. Now the way we can get the oxygen, I'm gonna put a plus sign, and then I'm gonna type player.oxygen. What this is doing is, is it's taking this value and adding it to this text here. That's what this plus sign means. Okay, now let's add the logic. I want some text to appear every time the player is, every time let's say the player is getting lower on oxygen. And the way we do this is we do an if statement, and this is very similar to sugarcube, player.oxygen, we'll say equals two, like this. I'm gonna put an open brace and I'm gonna put a closing brace. Now, if you're doing equal signs in sugarcube, you'd do something like this. This is the same as this. Unfortunately, this will not work in JavaScript. You always have to use equal equal. Now, sugarcube actually accepts equal equal as well, and oftentimes in the series, you've probably seen me do this just, just out of habit, because e EQ is, is not a standard thing to do. So it may be best for you to use equal equal instead of equals, that way you'll be on the same page with JavaScript and with sugarcube. Okay, so let's provide some text. We're gonna copy this Wikifier again. And we'll say your lungs start to ache. Now I'm gonna copy this and I'm just gonna paste it here. Now we'll add another little passage indicating that the player is really getting in trouble. Oops, here I'm using equal. I should be using the equal sign, equal sign. Now finally, we're going to put the death state. 
So the player has l exhausted their supply of oxygen. Well, we could print out some text here, but they could still be able to move throughout the game space. What we need to do is send them to an end passage. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna leave this text here for now, and I'm going to create a new passage, and we're gonna just call this drowned, like so. And I'll just write, you have drowned. And we'll put a sad face. <laughs> now we're going to go back to our edit JavaScript. And instead of printing out text, we want to send them to that passage. And this is what's great about this Wikifier is that we can call macros inside of Twine. Instead of printing text, I'm just going to put my macro here just as I would do it in a regular sugar cube passage. And I'm gonna be using the go to macro. This will redirect the player to this passage. So we're gonna send them to drowned, like that. I'm gonna put my semicolons after the Wikifier. Okay, now everything is in place except one thing. Right now, if the player goes to each macro, so far we're not reducing their oxygen supply. We're just printing out their current their current supply, so we need to do that now. I'm just gonna put player.oxygen, and I'm gonna do equals player.oxygen minus one. So this is simply taking the current player's oxygen, and what we're doing is we're minusing one and then reassigning it back to player.oxygen. This is a long form way of doing this. You could actually do it like this too like that, minus equals ones, does the same thing. But for now, I'll just spell it all out. Okay, so we have our macro set. Let's just leave that. I'm just gonna play to make sure I don't have any errors. SugarCube will gladly tell you when you mess up. And everything looks good, except this, I never fixed that. I'll have to fix that at some point. Okay, now we're gonna put in our underwater macro. The way we do this is we're going to go into our abandoned hallway. So you start swimming here, you take a deep breath and duck your head underwater. And this is where we're gonna add the macro. It's gonna go right above and we're gonna put swim underwater and we're gonna pass in the player object like that. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna add it to each one of these passages. Now you can see that's so much easier than actually going through and adding code to each individual passage. Now for the sake of starting, we're gonna have this be our first passage. That way we don't have to go through this each single time. Now I'm gonna play. And you take a deep breath. We got a, we got a problem right here. Error in the passage does not exist. Abandoned hallway does not exist. Okay, let me fix this. Okay, we're gonna run this again. I had a space in between there. Now, if I'm gonna click on swim here, we can say cannot execute macro, cannot read property oxygen of undefined. All right, so let's close this up. I'm gonna open up this story here and see where my error was. I have a feeling because we didn't enter this passage here, we didn't define our player object. So we'll just define it in this passage here. Now we're gonna play. And we're gonna swim. And you can see player oxygen supply at one. Your throat starts to spasm as you search in a search for air. And if we swim, actually I think we may drown to tell you the truth, we'll swim north. Your throat, yep. Oh. We got, we got an error here. Let, let's fix this out. We got a few errors. One, our spacing is off. And for the sake of debugging, I'm gonna add some breaks after this. So here, your throat starts to spasm in air, and we swim east, and we can see our supply isn't lowering and this is why it's useful to print out 
through these, and this is why it's useful to print out these debug things so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, in this case, we need to remove that minus sign. And I've drowned. So we're going to restart, okay? And now we're going to swim. Our oxygen, our oxygen supply is three. We're going to swim east. Our oxygen supply is two. We're going to swim back to the hall. Our oxygen supply is one. And if you swim north, you have drowned. Just like that. And now, finally, we're going to do this one more time. And I'm going to remove the debug information because we no longer need it. Like so. And now, we'll play this one more time. We'll restart this. Yes. We'll take a deep breath. We're going to swim. The hallway leads north. If we swim north, you can see our, your lungs start to ache. You see a light above the water that looks to be an air pocket. Swim up. Your head emerges. Never has air tasted so good. Let's do this one more time. And this is a case where we swim. We swim east. Your lungs start to ache. Let's swim back to the hall. Your throat starts to spasm in air. We'll swim back east again. And you have drowned. And that's really how, and that's how helpful working with macros are. Instead of writing all this crazy code in each separate passage, you now have it contained in a macro that can now be used throughout your story. All right, everyone, that is working with macros. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a message in the comments and I will get back to you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. See you then.